You know, America's famous for the two-layer cake with a filling and frosting, and it's also something that's served at almost every birthday party. But if you look around the world, they have a whole different kinds of cakes, usually one-layer cakes. They have tea cakes, they have pound cakes, biscuits, etc., scones. So today in Mill Street, we're going to take a fresh look at cakes and do simple cakes. We'll start with a strawberry shortcake, but it's made with a whipped cream biscuit. We actually whip the cream and fold it into the batter. Then we actually go to the Rose Bakery in Paris. They have a pistachio cardamom cake, which we love. And finally, we end up right here in America, in Atlanta, where a pastry chef has made a delicious buttermilk lemon pound cake. So stay tuned and hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Milk Street. Today we're doing something I like to do, which is biscuits. But the problem with biscuits is the basic formula is simple, right? It's baking powder, baking soda, flour, a little shortening, salt, probably some buttermilk. I've made them hundreds of times for breakfast. But if you want to use them for dessert, then the question is, what do you do? Well, you can cheat and just add some sugar. I do that all the time. Uh, or you can make a slightly different recipe, maybe with an egg yolk. But we wanted something lighter. And uh, we found a recipe, there's a 1939 cookbook. It has a whipped cream cake. You use whipped cream as a lightener. And that seemed to make more sense for dessert than just putting a little bit of sugar in a breakfast biscuit. I have to admit, when I first read the recipe, I was like, oh, that kind of seems like a lot of work. It's really gonna make a difference. And it does add this kind of airy lightness. And of course, the cream itself adds some really nice flavor to those flaky biscuits. Well, it does seem there are cookbook authors out there who do nothing but take simple recipes to make them more complicated. Right, right. And we like to go the other way, usually. Exactly, exactly. This is a dish that you can make, you know, in an hour. It's a really simple and quick dessert, which is why I like it so much. We just have two cups of all-purpose flour here, and I have a tablespoon of sugar. I have two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So there is some leavener in there other than just whipped cream half a teaspoon of kosher salt, and just a quarter teaspoon of baking soda. And we're just gonna whisk it to combine. And now, I'm gonna put you to work. And that's why you smile at me before yes, you well, tell me that. Yes, well, you made hundreds and hundreds of biscuits. You're a pro, why not use your skills? So you can take this. There is four tablespoons of salted butter over here, and it's cut up, and you just need to work it into the flour. And one, one thing to mention, in this recipe, you want to work it so fully. that it's full, fully dispersed. We're not looking for those pea-sized lumps. Well, this is like when sometimes. I was 10 and making pie pastry. This is how you did it, right? Right, throwback. I don't feel like I'm 10 anymore. <laughs> it's a throwback recipe. And while you do that, I'm going to whip the cream okay. that, that goes in there. Now, in addition to the whipped cream, we also have some sour cream. And the point of that is it just adds a really nice tang. So I have 2 thirds of a cup heavy cream and a half a cup of sour cream. You could do this in a food processor. If you, you didn't have uh, an old guy standing next to you who's done this a lot, right? Right, and to go the other direction, Chris, I could just sit here and whisk this with a whisk, you know, if we had all the time in the world. It's really important that you have chilled fat. You want cold ingredients when you're making biscuits. We don't want that fat to melt into the, into the pastry, of course. So I'm just gonna whip this together until we have soft peaks, and by the time that's done, you should have certainly... Well, I'll be another half hour, but you, that's plenty of time, time for you to Take whip your the cream. Time. Yeah. I was born with very cold hands. Oh. Cold hands are good for pastry. Yes. You know, you are the cheerful optimist of Milk Street. Because I said I had cold hands, you said, oh, but you have a warm heart. Well, you See? do. It's She's trying to, she so knows evident. I don't, but it just, it, it's, it's just nice of you to make the effort. You know what I mean? I like I'm, it. I'm still pretty new here, so. <laughs> You'll get used to it. In addition to having cold ingredients, Chris, it's really important that you use a gentle touch when you're making biscuits. You don't want them to get tough. So you did a really nice job. It's all worked in here. We don't have any clumps. And I'm going to use a spatula. Would you say that even if I didn't do a good job? Probably. Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah, I would just secretly work it a little bit more. So we're going to add the whipped cream. And then we're just going to fold it and press it. The goal is to have no dry flour, but not an overworked dough. You know, I'd never heard of, I heard of cream biscuits. Jim Beard in American Cookery, his mother used to make them. He had cream biscuits, which were really easy to make. But I'd never heard of whipped cream biscuits. This, and, I, and I thought I knew everything there was to know about biscuits. Evidently not. I hadn't either. And they're really delicious. And 
they come together, you know, pretty quickly, which is what I love about biscuits in general. I mean, I made these while my one-year-old was napping. This isn't something that you have to be an expert baker like you to make at home. So you can see I'm just kind of pressing with the spatula. And eventually, you can get in there with your hands, as long as you're gentle. So you can see we have a shaggy mass here. All the flour is wet. We don't want to work it too much into a nice smooth ball. That's not what you're looking for. You'll overwork the dough. I'm going to turn this out onto a floured board. And we're going to make two squares, about five inches each. That's pretty tidy, wouldn't you say? Are you looking for compliment? I am. I'm I fishing. am. I'm fishing. That's called fishing. It's for called a compliment. fishing. Yes. yes, I think it looks very tidy. Okay, one more. <laughs> but that's a little tidier. I mean, when someone starts off by saying, I've been making biscuits for years. I make hundreds and hundreds of biscuits. Uh, well, everybody has their little area of expertise. Do you want, do you want to tidy this one up too? Yes, I do. Thank I, you. Just, I'll get to the cutting. Okay. So instead of using a biscuit cutter, we're just going to use a bench scraper. You could certainly use a chef's knife. That way, we're not going to have any extra scraps that we have to re-roll and make tough. Well, I don't know if that's an improvement, but A for effort, Chris. <laughs> so we have eight biscuits. You want them to be about three quarters of an inch thick. We have a parchment lined baking pan here. So we should just emphasize that you barely form these together. Yes. They're very loosely shaped. That's the instinct is you want it to look pretty, you want it to be kind of perfect, but it's much more important that they stay light and flaky than having a smooth dough. Now we have a tablespoon of melted butter here. And I'm just gonna brush this on. This is gonna add some flavor and help with browning. I have one and a half teaspoons of sugar. We're gonna sprinkle that on top for a little crunch and a little sweetness. So these are ready to go into the oven. We have it set at 475 degrees, but as soon as these go in, we're gonna turn it down to 425. That way they'll get that nice golden top from the high heat, but then they can cook evenly without burning. So I'm gonna set our timer for about 15 minutes. But you're gonna check it after 10. Yes, I'll check it after 10. Okay. These usually take between 15 and 18 minutes, but we'll check because everybody's oven is a little bit different. So while our biscuits are baking, we're gonna get to work on some strawberries. We started with about two pounds of strawberries. We have two cups here that we're gonna mash. And this will just help the sugar and the lime zest get in even better and sort of speed the process along when we're macerating our berries. So I'm gonna add a quarter cup of just plain white sugar. And I have the zest of three limes, which is a little bit different, right? And then I have a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. All right, so that's nice and mashed. And then we're gonna add the rest of our strawberries. Now we wanna let this sit so that all the sugar and salt can kind of break down those strawberries. So we'll come back in 15 minutes. You can let this sit up to two hours. If there's any left after If there's two any hours. left, if you don't just pick <laughs> yeah, it in while we're here. So look at our beautiful biscuits. You're all, very proud of them, I, I I, as you should be. Well, you yes. should take some credit too. You helped all along the way. <laughs> so we let these sit for 10 minutes on the actual sheet pan that we cooked them on. Then we transferred them to a rack and we're just gonna let them sit while we make our whipped cream. We spiffied it up a little bit, just like we did with the lime zest for the strawberries. We have a cup of heavy cream. We have a half a cup of sour cream. We have two tablespoons of brown sugar instead of white sugar. A half a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm gonna add just a pinch of salt. I think part of the problem is if you buy heavy cream in the supermarket, unlike the way it used to be, it just doesn't have a tremendous amount of flavor because it's ultra yeah. pasteurized. So we're going to start the mixer on low just to blend everything, and then we can bump it up a little bit to finish whipping the cream. I like mine almost a little bit under whipped because you want it to really leach in with the berries and the biscuits. Should I serve us some? Yeah. I'm going to cut one of these biscuits open. You want to have them open like this so that it can absorb all that yummy macerated strawberries and all the juice. And then we'll do a dollop of whipped cream. And then I think it's nice to just kind of show off that pretty top of the biscuit. We spent I, all that time brushing I, the butter I would have eaten mine by now. I mean, we done now? We're done, finally. Mmm. You know, I actually like the lime zest. <laughs> it was... That means a lot coming mm -hmm. from you, Chris. It really does. You can make more beautiful looking biscuits. These are kind of shaggy looking, but they have a great light texture to them and mm -hmm. taste. And uh, you want it to taste like it's a dessert biscuit. The sour cream adds a really nice tang along with the lime. It just makes the topping a little bit different, a little more interesting. 
So today on Milk Street, we learned something about making a biscuit actually for dessert, not for breakfast. Uh, we started with a standard recipe, but then we used whipped cream to help leaven the biscuits along with some baking powder and soda and some of the usual suspects. It makes a great shaggy biscuit, but it's also light and it also has a little lime zest with the strawberries as well. And a great job, I would add. Thank you. You too, Chris. <laughs>
Well, you know, they might separate a little bit or they might weep a little bit, but for this it's okay because we're baking them into a cake. And we actually at Milk Street like to not dirty as many dishes as possible. So, and I will well, be quick. Well, that's refreshing. So, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, now we're moving on to two cups of sugar. And this is two tablespoons of lemon zest. It's a lot of lemon zest, but. Well, we wouldn't call it lemon no, you <laughs> cake if we didn't have a lot of Well, there of are a lot of lemon cakes that don't taste all that lemony. And so I'm just gonna mix this first before I add our butter. The sugar grinds against the lemon zest and it releases all the oils and it gives us more flavor. All right, you can smell it, which is a good sign. And you can also see that it's uh, starting to moisten. The sugar is moistened, it's starting to clump up a little bit. So we're ready to add our butter. So here I have 12 tablespoons of softened butter. So could you just show what that means, softened butter? Yeah. It's sure. not soft. I'll get it's my softened. hands dirty. So you can, it's not melting and it's not greasy looking, but you can, it's very pliable and you can, you know, mush it around different things. It's pliable. So this is more the pound cake part of this pound cake. Yeah, it's, exactly. It's or layer cake. Or, yeah, it's like a butter cake. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to make sure that the butter gets all incorporated or else, you know, we're going to have sugar flying everywhere. So we're just going to get this going. So what happens if the butter is cold out of the fridge because you're like me and you didn't plan ahead? Well, it won't cream. You won't get any air in there at all because the butter is just going to be too hard and crumbly. And it's Which just means not the cake's going to be denser. It will be denser, yeah. And if it's too warm, same thing, it can't hold. Right, it'll break down and it'll get air. greasy, exactly. So I think we're ready to start whipping this. We're going to medium high speed for three minutes. Okay, so this is creamed, as you can see. So now we're going to add our five egg yolks. I'm going to turn this back on again. I'm going to add them one by one. I just want to make sure that each one mixes in before you add the next. Now, I remember Susan Purdy, remember the cake book she did years ago? She said you really have to mix an egg yolk or an egg for like 20 seconds between each addition. Yeah. You, you think that's too much? I don't, actually. I have made some bundt cakes and, and layer cakes where I, I've been rushing it, and then the mixture will curdle uh -huh. completely, and I'll be like, what happened? It's sort of an emulsification that's happening. There's, you know, but you do want to allow each one to mix in before you add the next. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, I'm going to scrape down the bowl. It's very exciting. <laughs> but these bowls do have a little uh, well at the bottom. So in a typical pound cake, all of the aeration, the lift, is going to come from the butter, the sugar, and the eggs being creamed just right. Right, exactly. But this recipe, we have other be, things going on finicky. for leavening. Yeah. Yes, there are, a lot, there are two other. We have egg whites and we have, as you'll see soon, chemical leavener. Go ahead and get these other ingredients ready. So here I have two and three quarter cup cake flour. And to this, I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of baking soda, which is our chemical leavener. And also a half teaspoon of kosher salt. And I'm just gonna whisk this in just to make sure there aren't any clumps of leavener. And then our liquid ingredients. Here we have three quarter cup of buttermilk. Okay, and I'm gonna add to that three tablespoons of lemon juice. It's an acidic ingredient and it's gonna react with our baking soda and it's gonna create carbon dioxide, which is gonna create little bubbles. You know, that's what's gonna leaven our cake. All right, so now we're gonna add these to our cake. We're gonna alternate. So I'm gonna put this on low speed. But on low speed. Definitely on low speed, yeah, because now we're adding our flour and we don't wanna overmix that. So I'm just gonna put in about a third. Now I'm gonna pour half of the buttermilk lemon juice mixture. This is the more exciting part. The buttermilk's more exciting than the flour. You think so? Yeah, it's much more exciting. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so now it's time for those egg whites that we set aside. I'm gonna add a third of these egg whites. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna lighten it first because you can see it's a pretty thick butter batter. And if we tried to just go ahead and add the light fluffy whites, it would be really difficult. This is Erica at her roughest. <laughs> this is as violent as you get yeah, well. in the kitchen. All right, now this part I'm gonna be a little more delicate. So there, there are really two things. You're cutting down the middle. Right. And then you're and going then, around the perimeter. And then I'm folding, yeah. And you know, here it's important not to overmix. Should you be able to see streaks of white? Some whites left? Yes, not big streaks, but you do wanna see just a few small streaks of white. So if you undermix, that means you get more lift in the oven. It's not true for every recipe, but a recipe like this, if you undermix the whites into the batter, you get more lift. Exactly. If you do a little too much, you take those whites in and you decrease the air right, in them. Just keep eating the air out. And you're going to get not as much rise. Right, right, exactly. So if you could be so kind as to hand me our beautifully prepared butt pan. Now for this cake, this cake does have a lot of sugar in it because you know we got to counteract all that buttermilk and the lemon juice. So we found that putting a very generous coating of soft butter, even using a pastry brush to get into all the corners and crevices and not forgetting the tube in the middle, then we dusted it with sugar actually. Mm -hmm. And um, not only did it make it not stick at all and almost foolproof, but it gave it a really nice uh, crust almost on the outside. 
And bun pans are notoriously difficult because the shape. Yes. Anyway, getting the cake out yes. of the pan. So I'm going to gently transfer this to the pan. Smooth it out a little bit. Again, being very gentle. I'm going to put this into a 325 degree oven on the middle rack. It's going to bake for about 50 to 60 minutes. You do want to start checking it early because it does have the whipped whites in it. And like a sponge cake, it can go from done to being dry very quickly. And another thing that's um, kind of important to keep in mind is the color of your cake pan. If you have a light colored pan like this one, it might take a little longer to bake. But if your pan's very dark, almost black, it might be done earlier. Okay. So, so check early and check off. Yeah, okay. exactly. Yeah. So here we go. Here's a news flash from Milk Street. It turns out that nonstick baking pans actually are not nonstick. You actually have to butter them or spray them. Now, here at Milk Street, we actually like to use butter and then with a coating of flour. I'm going to use a tablespoon or so and put that right in the pan. Just use your fingers. This is especially true with a bun pan because the cakes will definitely stick to that. And if you like, you can use a pastry brush to uh, smooth it out. Now, the next step is to flour this pan and we'll just take a little bit of flour you can do that and just move it around, turn it on its side, and give it a few whacks so it's nice and evenly coated like that. Now, if you're making a cake that has a very high proportion of sugar, uh, our lemon buttermilk pound cake, for example, instead of flour, you can actually use sugar, which will stick to the butter. It'll give you a nice uh, outside crust, also makes it a little bit easier to release. The other option is to use baking spray. Now this is actually not regular nonstick spray. It actually has flour in it, so make sure it says baking. And that also works pretty well, and it's very easy to apply to the inside of the pan. So once you take a cake out of the oven, you put it on a cooling rack for 10 to 15 minutes, it should still be a little bit warm, so it makes it easier to release. So we'll take the cake, and now we'll just flip it over. And there it is, it releases perfectly. So the answer is use softened butter, a little bit of flour or sugar if it's a particularly sweet cake. And that's how, from Milk Street, that's how to make a nonstick baking pan actually nonstick. So here we have yeah. it. Yeah, oh come on, look at that, look at that beautiful. <laughs> no, it looks, it looks fast. crust, yeah. So we, I, took I just it. wanted to see your face. So I took it out of the oven and I let it cool in the pan for 10 minutes. And then you want to pop it out of the pan. You don't want to let it sit longer than that because then it might start to stick. And then you're going to let it cool completely. And it takes about an hour. Now I actually had this at area restaurant in, in Atlanta and they toast the slices, Ooh. which is um, transformational. I mean, you, you have this nice That's crusty great. on the outside and it's really creamy on the inside. Yeah. So I just throw it under a broiler or you can actually put it in a toaster if you have a big wide slot toaster. We really like creme fraiche as a nice alternative to the usual sweetened whipped cream. Um, this is unsweetened. Um, it has a nice little nuttiness to it, and the cake is sweet enough, so it's a nice complement to it. All right, here we go. Mm. Mm. The crust with it, with the sugar and the butter, yeah. it actually has a crackly outer it crust. It does, yeah, it, and a like, little hit of sweetness you get. And the cake itself is nice and light, but mm. it's still rich. This um, is a little light pound cake, but it's lighter, it's tangier, it has that nice outside crust, mm -hmm. and it's also pretty foolproof, right? Because yeah, you no, have, it is, because you have all those extra You got leavener, you got egg whites going on, et cetera. So today at Mill Street, we learned a few things about making cakes in general. Don't overbeat the egg whites right. in most cakes, uh, and don't overfold them into the batter because you'll decrease their volume when right. it bakes. And when you prepare the pan, especially a bunt style pan with all those crevices, right. softened butter and a little bit of sugar, not flour, it helps it release and gives a nice crackly crust. All of the recipes from this season are available at our website, which is MilkStreetTV.com.